Hello and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks and this is the second in my series of lessons where I demonstrate how to work with dates and times in Excel. Today our focus is on date functions. Let's begin with probably the most popular of the date functions, the today function. Equals today, left parentheses, right parentheses. Even though there are no arguments, left and right parentheses are required. The today function is an example of what's called a volatile function, a dynamic function. Meaning that tomorrow when I open up the spreadsheet, the today function in the formula bar will return the current date, 12-10-2010. Now, a function that's closely related to the today function is the now function, equals now, left parentheses, right parentheses. With the now function, in addition to the current date, we also get the current time. Now, later in the lesson, just before I close, I'll update the spreadsheet, and you'll see how this cell changes. All right, let's go over to see what we can do with the date value function. Date value function, as you can see, converts a date from text to a serial number. As you recall from the prior lesson, if we're going to perform any calculations in elapsed time, 30 days from a date, we must make sure that our dates are stored as numbers. A quick way to tell if it's a number or text is look at the alignment. If a date is aligned to the right side of the cell, it's stored as a number. We can perform calculations. If it's aligned to the left side, then it's text. And in that case, we would want to use date value. So what I did with date value, there's one argument, point to a cell that you want to convert from text into a serial number. And again, remember to change the formatting. If I wanted to change this into a, a serial number, control shift tilde changes it into a, form, uh, a serial number, or I could have just gone up here and changed it from date format into a general format. All right, now what we can also do with date value is we can actually include inside double quotations an, a, an actual legitimate date. But as I said, control shift tilde or changing the format to general will do the same thing. If I have a long series of, 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 of dates or quasi dates, then I will use date value in there. All right, before I move any further, let's talk about the fence post analogy. If I ask five people how many days have elapsed between the 1st of January and the 5th of January, I guarantee I'll get 10 different answers. So did we actually work on the 1st? Did we actually work on the 5th? How many posts are in the fence? Do you count the beginning uh, uh, post? Do you count the end post? So Excel will return four when I say equals later date minus earlier date. If I did work on one of those days, what I want to do is make sure that I perform the calculation later date minus earlier date inside a left and a right parentheses and then add one to that. So we'll talk about this a little bit later on in the lesson. All right, now the date function. You are going to be using the date function quite a bit. Let me give you a breakdown of how the date function works. The date function returns the serial number of a date that when you supply arguments for the year, the month, and the date. So over here you see I'm pointing to three different cells and frequently a client will send me a spreadsheet where the year is in one cell, the month is in another cell, and the date is in another cell. So equals date and let's use the keyboard shortcut uh, control A to bring up the function arguments dialog box. The syntax is important. Now I can either point to a cell that contains uh, the, the, the year or the month and the date or I could type it in. So if I wanted to put in 2011 and the first month of the year and the third day in January then I'll get a date over there. And again it's going to give me a date if I have the cell formatted for date or it will return a serial number if the cell is formatted for a serial number. All right, now let's come down here and talk about functions that you actually have to make sure you've activated. So if you want to be able to use Workday, Networkday, ZOM, and some of the other valuable functions, you have to actually activate what's called the Analysis Tool Pack. Now in Excel 2003 and earlier, go to the Tools on the menu. In the drop-down, you'll go to Add-ins and select the Analysis Tool Pack. In Excel 2007, Office button, Excel Options, 
come over here to add-ins and we want to make sure that we show as active the analysis tool pack if you're not sure as part of the Excel add-ins click go and this is what the dialog box looks like in all versions so make sure you have a check mark next to the analysis tool pack alright work days will return a serial date when a project will end so when we know a starting date and we know how many days we worked when will the project end so let's come over here and equals work days control a there are two required arguments one optional argument so my starting date I'll point to a cell over here the actual number of days that I worked was 15 in this case now you see that optionally I can include holidays so the workday function excludes by default Saturdays and Sundays it said well you didn't work on Saturdays and Sundays and if I want to exclude others then create a name range for the holidays when you didn't work so now when I click OK there you can see that a starting date of January 5th working 15 days excluding Saturday and Sunday this project will end on the 26th of January and again let's come over here 12 6 December 6 is a Monday 12 10 is a Friday equals work day uh, yeah and what I want to do in here is put in the starting date and then I'll say well, alright I worked five days on this when will this project end it will end on next Monday the 13th alright now a function that is easily confused with workday is network days and network days is not the days that you go out to the Chamber of Commerce and exchange business cards and have a cocktail with uh, other businesses the network days will tell you when you have a start date and an end date how many days did I actually work on the project and again there's an optional third argument so over here when I know the start and the end date I want to know how many days that I actually work equals network days control A alright my starting date was here my ending date is over here so I'm going to exclude Saturdays and Sundays and I'm going to omit the holidays click OK I work 243 days between the start date and the end date so over here if I want to see how many actual days I worked I would use the network days instead of the work days over there all right finally let me discuss another valuable another great function for uh, the analysis tool pack the EOM when you want to know the last day of of any month the last calendar day of any month all you have to do is with the EOM function is you point to a cell or you type in a date from a month that you want to have the last day of that month or make a reference to so in this case I'm pointing to a cell that has a date in November the second argument I have is zero because I want it to be the current month over here when I wanted to get the last day of a month it's one day after the current month EOM and notice that I used absolute uh, references over here so point to a day in December but one month after that gave me the last day and of course I just copied that over to get the last day in February March April etc alright just before we end remember I told you I would update uh, the, the now function over here now I would normally use the F9 keyboard shortcut to recalculate but in the program that I use to record these videos that will do something else so this will automatically update when I save uh, the the program it will automatically update when I perform a calculation that references it all right so there you've seen my favorite my most useful date functions in Excel it's typical of the tips that I offer on my DVDs and I'll look for you in the next lesson